So I'm going back to basics. I'm going back to the classics. I'm going back to the things that I know that I grew up with in this country because I think these are the cornerstones, the great things of brilliant cooking. And I'm going to make for you a caramel souffle with a ginger cake and some caramel ice cream. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do is actually make this souffle up. Um, a souffle is an extraordinary thing because so few people understand how it should really, really work. And a souffle is really a pudding with lots and lots of egg white in it, rather than being lots of egg white with just a little bit of flavor to it. So what I have made is the first recipe I ever, ever learned as an apprentice, which is a, a cream pat, creme patissiere, which if I sort of rattle it off, it's fairly easy to work out. Eight egg yolks, 40 grams of sugar, 40 grams of corn flour, 120 grams of flour, one liter of milk, and then I add caramel to it to make a souffle base. And that's exactly what I've done. But for the souffle itself, I need some egg whites. And these egg whites have just been started off and they've been beaten just a little bit. And then I'm going to add to that some more sugar. So there's four egg whites in here. And we're going to whisk those up to be able to make sure that they are more than just whisked a little bit. If that works, it does. Look at that. And then you press a button and it goes faster. Wow, look at that. Whoa. So the actual secret of these things is about the egg white itself being stiff enough to hold the actual custard and make sure it works. Now, I do have to be on time today because when the souffle goes in the oven, I've got just 20 minutes left until it cooks before I have to get out of the oven. So there's the egg white as it should be. How do I slow this thing down? It scares me, this thing. Look, watch this. Uh... And now it's almost a sort of glossy meringue texture. Off. That was scary. Okay, so there's the start of it. That's the egg white. And then to add that, I'm going to add some caramel custard. As I said, I made a custard up, uh, or creme patissiere, and I added to it ginger syrup, some ginger itself, and then I've put some caramel in as well. And you'll see that the amount of custard here is almost half the amount of the egg white. You put in half the custard first, and then fold it together, and then really give it a hard time. People think you've got to be gentle with a souffle. It's absolutely wrong. You've got to give it a really good beating, a proper, decent little slap around the bowl. What? Don't, I didn't say the bedroom. I said the bowl. Then add the rest of the custard to it as well. And this is the basic flavor of it. Without having that really lovely, rich custard base, the actual souffle itself will taste of nothing but air. And the other thing is that what it will do is it will sink really, really quickly. So as I say, it's more of a pudding with egg white through it rather than egg white with the flavoring running through it. Into a tray, I've got here four souffle molds, grease them first with some butter, sugar around the outside, and the sugar melts as the whole thing cooks and allows the souffle to slip up the outside of it. So you're going to pour that into each mold. I might need to do a couple. And then just to the top. And then the same with that one. Let's just do two, I think. That's probably going to be enough. And then I can actually get on with everything else. And I say, give it a bit of a hard time. Really, just tap them down. So the whole thing sits and then do exactly the same with the other one. In fact, I'm going to pour some out because it's too much. Oh, that tastes good, John. You rock. Thank you. I think I'm talking to myself. Might have something to do with jet lag. Actually, I was very, very lucky because I was flown over by Qantas and it was a really lovely journey over. So thank you, Qantas. How are you doing over there? Is it nice? Nice and comfy? Oh, good. In-flight entertainment coming up really, really soon. Well, wipe the outside of each of the bowls, and then that's going to get dropped into the oven. Now, somewhere around here, I have a ginger cake. That's going to the oven 100 and, about 180 degrees for about 30 minutes. Without a grill tray in there, 
and without another shelf on top because otherwise it won't work. That goes somewhere else. We'll put that one. Don't go there, can't it? That's nice. In you go. Let's just hope that works. Um, as a young kid, I grew up in a mixture of both Melbourne and Sydney, or just outside Sydney in a little place called Maitland. I lived with my grandmother, and um, she was an amazing cook, an incredible cook, and she used to make wonderful cakes, and this was inspired by her, although this is a very, very old British rail cake recipe, and it's a proper ginger cake. And a ginger cake like this needs to be made a couple of days in advance, wrapped into a piece of um, paper and then into cloth. Otherwise, it's just not stodgy enough. It needs to be properly, deliciously stodgy. And it really is wonderful and moist. You leave that for a couple of days and it is just incredible. Square it off. And as I say, when you do restaurants, things are quite different because you start off with a cake like that. And what you've got to do now is turn it into something quite pretty and something that you wouldn't make at home. And that really is the point of what a good restaurant should be all about. Take that. I'll put my cake. No, I won't. I'll leave it there. And I can have ginger cake. Cut down the center. The same custard that I had before, which I used to make the base of my souffle into a piping bag. And then I'm just going to pipe a little bit into the middle of this little thing to make a little sandwich of ginger cake and custard. So you can imagine now what we're going to start with is cake and custard and then souffle, excuse me, well, I'm, I'm eating while I'm talking, and then she'll sit there on my little plate away from my tray and I'm going to dust that with ice and sugar in a moment and that will sit just there we're off the outside, and that's going to be ready for the ice cream and the souffle, if the souffle works. Radio, now. Ice cream. Where's my ice cream? That's what I need to know. Where is my ice cream? I wonder. Where? Oh, it's in the fridge, isn't it? It's in the fridge? Yes. Yes. Thanks, Alistair. You're good for something. Um, this is my no churn. Caramel ice cream. The recipe is in the book, so you can find it in there. And no churn, no come out ice cream. Right. Calm. Let's not do that. Let's do it differently. Let's take a spoon. Let's take a spoon. Let's take some boiling hot water. Drop the spoon in the boiling hot water. Get the spoon really, really hot. And then drag the spoon across the top of the ice cream. And it should. Yes, it does. Look at that. Oh, so good, John. That goes there like that. And now, here we go. Ladies and gentlemen, my delicious souffles. Bum, ba -dum, ba -dum, ba -dum. Ice and sugar on top. Ice and sugar on the ginger cake. Put that there or there. Pick up the souffle. There we are. Caramel ice cream. Caramel souffle. Red tea towel on plates. Souffle off. Um, guys, thanks for bringing me back to Australia. I hope you have a really wonderful day. Thank you very much indeed. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, John Tarot.